Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Today we're taking our first look at 538's 2020 presidential election forecast and translating it over to an electoral map between Joe Biden and Donald Trump. I'll be updating this pretty often leading up to November 3rd as 538 is an extremely comprehensive and reliable source for election related data. So make sure you hit the big red subscribe button down below so you never miss any of my videos before the election. Anyways, in these videos, we will be going through the forecast, taking a look at all of the competitive states, and then translating the margins over to the map. Keep in mind, anything from 0 to 2 percentage points is a tilt classification, from 3 to 7 is lean, 8 to 12 is likely, and anything above 12 is considered safe. And so we'll start with the state of Alaska. Typically a very conservative state in presidential elections, the 538 forecast only has Trump up 10 points over Biden. A few polls have come out showing the two of them neck and neck, which likely has caused this, but it does mean Alaska is only a likely state in this map. One thing to remember though, in years past, Alaska tends to favor Republicans a lot more on election day than polls initially suggest. But moving on to Nevada nonetheless, which is thought of as much more of a swing state than Alaska, Biden has a 78% chance of winning and holds a 52 to 46 point advantage over Trump. Hillary Clinton defeated Donald Trump by 2.5 points here in 2016, so it's no surprise to see that Biden is expected to win it in 2020. His 6 point lead here makes it a lean blue state on the electoral map. Now we go to the state of Arizona, a historically red state that is sure to be extremely competitive in November. All signs are pointing towards an enormous democratic shift over the coming decade here, but whether or not it flips in 2020 or later is the question. The forecast has Biden winning in 56 out of 100 simulations or a 56% win probability and gives him a very slim 50 to 49 point edge in the statewide popular vote. This makes Arizona a tilt blue state as of right now, pushing Biden to over 200 electoral votes. Next is the state of Colorado, where Joe Biden holds an 85% win probability and has a 54 to 44 point edge. This 10 point margin of lead puts Colorado in the likely blue column for Biden, no surprise there. Our next state is the state of Texas, with its whopping 38 electoral votes expected to be competitive for the first time in decades. According to this 538 forecast, Trump wins in 70 out of 100 simulations, giving him a 70% chance of winning and he has a 52 to 47 popular vote lead. Interestingly, this 5 point lead is far higher than 538's polling data suggests which has had the two candidates in an effective tie for the past few weeks. However, the five point advantage does make it a lean red state on the electoral map. Moving eastward, the state of Missouri was extremely close in 2008, with Obama losing by less than a point, but it has gone safely for the Republicans since. However, in this forecast, Missouri goes to Trump by the same margin, Colorado goes to Biden by 10 points, and that's a likely classification on the map. Now I don't expect Missouri to be quite this close when all is said and done, but if it continues to hover around this margin leading into election night, it could be worth paying attention to. Next is Iowa. Despite Trump's 10 point win here in 2016, polls show him and Biden very, very close, and the forecast reflects that change as Trump has just a 4 point advantage as of right now in the forecast. Nonetheless, it's a lean red margin on the map. Up north in the state of Minnesota, the only really competitive Rust Belt state not to flip red in 2016, it should be no surprise that Biden has a 72% chance of winning and holds a 5 point edge, making it a lean blue state on the map. Joe Biden now holds a 224 to 160 lead over Donald Trump as we make our way through the Rust Belt in Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania. Interestingly, Biden holds the exact same chance of winning and margin of lead in Wisconsin as in Minnesota, with 72% and 5 points respectively. So Wisconsin will also be lean blue here, on the map. As for Michigan, with Biden performing a bit better in polls here, he has a 7 point edge, but that is also a lean margin this far out from election day, and as you can see here, is the blue wall forming that Clinton lost in 2016 but Biden is looking to win back in 2020. The state of Pennsylvania is also right there with Minnesota and Wisconsin at 5 points for Biden, although his 74% chance of winning is a tad bit higher than both of those states. And with this lean blue classification in Pennsylvania, it gives Biden 270 electoral votes already. So just take a look at that upper rust belt as well. 
with all four states in the lean column for Joe Biden. If he can hang on to all four, he will almost certainly win the Electoral College. Moving downwards to the state of Ohio, the final state in the Midwest, similarly to Iowa, the state went from Obama in 2008 and in 2012 to deeply in Trump's camp in 2016. According to 538, he has just a one point edge at 50 to 49 over Biden and currently has a 54% chance to win. So Ohio and Arizona are the states to watch so far, with Ohio going in the tilt Republican column. And moving on south in Virginia, Biden has an 11 point advantage here and a 92% chance of winning the state, which makes it a likely blue state on the map. No Republican has won a statewide election in the state of Virginia since 2009, and that is expected to continue. Next is the state of North Carolina, possibly the most competitive state this year. 538 ranks it as a complete toss up, with both candidates having a 50% chance of winning and each candidate split at 50% of the popular vote. Scrolling down to the polls, you can see just how back and forth they are. Trump, Biden, Trump, Biden, Trump, Biden, tie, Biden. Really, really close. But if you look very, very closely into the popular vote forecast, Trump holds the slightest of edges and thus it will be labeled as a tilt Republican state on the map. Next comes South Carolina, a state that has consistently hovered around 10 to 15 points in favor of the Republicans in recent elections, but is currently rated as plus nine for them according to 538. Trump is certainly expected to win with an 87% chance of winning, but this is just a likely margin for the map. Next is Georgia. Similarly to Texas, it's a historically red state that has trended more towards the Democrats and was closer in 2016 than expected. And despite Biden holding an edge in the majority of polls, he's only given a 35% chance to win, with Trump holding a three-point edge over him. That's a lean margin, which means Georgia joins Texas and Iowa as the lean Republican state so far. So we only have three states left, with those being Florida, New Hampshire, and Maine. And starting down here in Florida, Biden is actually given a 65% chance to win here and a three-point edge with 51% to Trump's 48%. Biden leads in virtually every single poll, and especially among older voters, a demographic that is incredibly prevalent in Florida. If his numbers among these older voters holds up, he could certainly end up winning here despite Trump's 1.2 point margin of victory in 2016. But moving up to New Hampshire, where Hillary Clinton won by her lowest margin of any state in 2016, Biden is given a seven point lead here, despite his chance of winning at 72%, which is more similar to Minnesota and Wisconsin, states where he was only given a five point lead. Still, it's a lean margin in New Hampshire and we move on to Maine, our final state. Let's first look at the two statewide electoral votes, which Biden is expected to win by eight points, just enough for a likely label there. And finally, in Maine's second district, where Trump is given a four point edge, this was a near safe margin for Trump in 2016, so he should be expected to win here again. And I just realized I forgot about Nebraska's second congressional district, so let's make our way over to the forecast where they give Biden a 55% chance of winning and a slight one point edge in the popular vote, a tilt blue classification on the map. But that does it for today's August 18th version of the 538 forecast electoral map. Joe Biden holds 319 electoral votes to Donald Trump's 219, and things are certainly going to change after the Democratic National Convention this week and after the Republican National Convention as well. We're also yet to really see what effect the Kamala Harris running mate choice will have on the polls as well. But as I said at the start, I'll update this quite regularly, so make sure to subscribe down below if you haven't already. Like the video if you did while you're down there as well. Thank you all so much for watching and tune in next time.